Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how I use art resin to seal my rocks. I use these little plastic medicine cups for mixing because they already have the measurements on the side. You can steal them off of your medicine bottles or you can also buy disposable ones. I use a wooden dowel to mix and then I use latex gloves to protect my hands. Art resin comes with two bottles, one is the resin and one is the hardener. And the most important piece of information about this process is that you need equal parts of both the resin and the hardener. So that's why I use the medicine cups. It's very easy to get the equal parts in one container without having to transfer them in from another container. So you can see that I already poured the resin in and I went to the 10 milliliter mark and now I'm going to pour the hardener in which will be another 10 milliliters. So I'm gonna to aim to make this top off at the 20 milliliter mark. Now that everything's in the cup, I'm going to take the wooden dowel and mix the resin and the hardener. You will start to see bubbles forming. That's okay. Just make sure that you are mixing it well, scraping off the sides. I normally mix this for about two minutes. I won't drag the video out to mix it for the full two minutes. You're gonna get some shots of kind of what it looks like in the process of mixing it. You can see the bubbles, you can see the consistency. This is a silicone mat that I purchased on Amazon. I've tried many things, but this is my favorite thing for the resin to cure on. There is a shiny side and a dull side. You wanna make sure you have the shiny side up. It's really easy to peel the rocks off when they're cured. And so I just set out all of my rocks and get them ready to resin. I'm gonna give the resin a few final stirs and then I'm gonna set it down on the mat. And what I usually do is kind of drip whatever resin is on that wooden dowel onto one of the rocks. And I will take my gloved hand and wipe off whatever resin residue is on that dowel off. And then I set it aside and I use that dowel over and over again to mix the resin. And then basically you just take the resin and you can dip your finger into the mixed resin and just put a little bit onto the rocks and you just rub it on like you see me doing here. You don't wanna go too thick or you will get this kind of sharp ridge on the bottom of the rock because it is self-leveling. What I mean by self-leveling is that if you have sort of an uneven amount of resin on the top of the rock, it will settle and self-level to be very smooth. But with rocks, because they have the edges, what will happen is the resin will kind of come around the side and then it settles underneath the rock and you can get a little bit of a sharp edge. While you're watching the application process of the resin, I wanted to talk really quickly about the two main reasons I hear that hold people back from trying resin. And both of these applied to myself, so I'm speaking from experience. Um, the first one is the cost. So it can seem very expensive when you look up how much this stuff costs. So what you saw me use in this video was um, a set of hardener and resin. They're each four ounce bottles. That costs $29 on Amazon for the set of the two bottles, which seems a little insane when you can go to Walmart and buy a spray sealer for three or four dollars. But I had to go back into my Amazon order history to see when I ordered the art resin. And I actually ordered the art resin um, on January 12th of 2020. Today is January 10th of 2021. So, and I still have resin left in those bottles. There's probably between an eighth and a quarter of a bottle left in the bottles. So they have lasted me literally a year. I don't always use it on everything. I still use spray sealer if I'm in a time crunch because this does take three days to fully cure. So I don't always use it on everything, but it, it is what I seal my rocks with most of the time. So that kind of gives you an idea of how long it actually lasts for the cost. And it, in the end, it's kind of an investment that ends up being well worth it. Um, and it also gives so much better of a shine than you can get out of the spray sealers. The other reason that I hear holding people back is that they're just afraid to try this process. It's a little messy, it takes longer, it's just different. So hopefully this video will demystify the process a little bit for you and take away some of those scary feelings. 
Now I'm gonna use a reusable drinking straw to blow air to pop the bubbles on the surface of the stones. You just wanna be careful that no saliva sneaks out through the straw. Some people also use hair dryers or heat guns for this process. I wanted to show you exactly how many rocks I was able to seal with that 20 milliliters of resin that we mixed up. So it's quite a few that I was able to do in one sitting. It was more than just that one mat that you saw. I don't touch the rocks for at least 24 hours and it does take a full 72 for full curing to take place. So this is a couple days later and I wanted to show you how nicely they peel off of those silicone mats. And you can also see that there's some drips that have fallen onto the silicone mats and I'm also gonna show you how easily those peel off as well. So this is one of those drips. You just take your fingernail, get it under there and you can peel off that little drip of resin. I love these mats so much. I wanted to show you on this rock what happens when there's too much resin used and it pools and forms that kind of sharp edge on the bottom. So what I do for this is I take a metal file and just file it down until it's smooth or at minimum is not sharp where it's gonna hurt someone because some of them are sharp enough where it actually probably could cut you. Some people also use Dremels. If it's not super thick, you could use sandpaper, but the point is to just kind of file it down so that it's nice and even. You can then do another coat of resin when you do your next batch. Um, or if it didn't make too many marks, if the filing or sanding didn't make too many marks, you could just leave it as is and go with it. So you can see here that this one actually had a pretty thick edge on it. So I did go ahead and file this down and I did another coat of resin before I hid this stone. So now I just wanna take a few seconds to show you some of the finished products and how shiny they are. And this is why so many of us love it so much. It's also very durable. It's a nice, solid seal. And of course for me, with my love of glitter paints, one of the main reasons I love resin is because when you get it on there, it really makes glitter pop and have this dimension and sparkle to it that is just, you cannot get it with a spray sealer. In the description below, you'll find links for all of the supplies I used in this video, and I hope it's inspired you to try Art Resin to seal your rocks. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future uploads, and we'll see you next time.